Andrei Ilich and I'm an architect and senior BIM manager at Bexel Consulting Company. First, I want to thank you all for such a high interest in our presentation. We have once again succeeded in gathering more than 2,000 professionals from all around the world. In the next two hours, my colleague Mileta Pejovic and I will try to present you advanced automated BIM workflows through a series of live demonstrations. In the first part of the session, we will focus on advanced 3D BIM workflows and in the second part, my colleague will guide you through 5D and 4D. Event is streamed at our LinkedIn page and YouTube account and recording will be available on both platforms in case you miss streaming or want to watch it again. Direct link to a high resolution YouTube streaming is available in chat section. All materials used in presentation are already available for download on Bexel user area platform in webinar materials section titled Bexel Free Online Education November 2021 uh, exercise materials. For those attendees who haven't still tried Bexel Manager platform, I will just briefly walk you through the process of free trial request. At our company webpage, you can request your trial license by simply submitting requests through a simple form. You gain access to a 30-day free license for full features of Bexel Manager software. The only requirement we have for you is to use your company or university email address in submission form. If you are a student or professor, you can request educational license and gain access to one-year trial of our software solution. With Bexel Manager trial, you also get access to our virtual knowledge base, Bexel user area. You can access it simply through our website. Uh, you can use your email and password from trial activation process and start using your free knowledge base. On the materials page, you can find a range of free educational materials for Bexel Manager, including manuals, detailed step-by-step -step guide, complete sample project accompanied by educational materials, useful add-ins and API scripts, webinar materials, including one from this session as well, as well as various classification databases ready for import to Bexel Manager. So if you haven't, I invite you to request trial and try it for yourself. Try to recreate workflows from our educational materials or from this webinar, test the platform and see how it suits your needs and how it can help you improve your productivity. Just before we start with the presentation, I will give you a brief overview of today's session. In the first part, we will have a short introduction about our company and software. And then we will talk about model quality control and predefined selection sets, templates, custom breakdown structure and CBS templates, BIM data validation and BCF exchange, model health check, Power BI reports, uh, advanced data enrichment, advanced clash detection workflows, uh, clash Power BI reports, uh, containment relations data enrichment using API scripts, as well as model versions comparison in portfolio manager platform. Uh, in the second part of the of the session, my uh, colleague Mileta Pejovic will walk you through the integrated 4D and 5D workflows and he will uh, tell you the specifics in the second part of uh, session. In today's session, we will focus on automation of BIM project management processes, smart knowledge management and how BIM platforms can help you to optimize your work, establish procedures and significantly improve productivity. So let's start. At the beginning, just before we start with the topic, just a brief introduction about Bexel. Bexel is a software development and BIM consultants company with experience on numerous projects around the globe. We are multinational members of Building Smart International and we are devoted to integrated BIM project management, BIM education and BIM implementation. Last year, we won Innovation Award at Building Smart annual competition and we are very proud to be recognized as leaders in innovation in field of BIM. Our software solutions and consulting services are used on numerous projects by big well-known companies around the world and we are proud to say that we gain trust from so many renowned clients. 
our software platform is present at 55 countries around the globe and our user interface is localized in 10 languages with new localizations in development. Pexel Manager software solution is currently used for managing projects of total value exceeding 90 billion US dollars. So, to move to the topic. If we talk about BIM from construction industry perspective, we can all agree that today it is definitely in the point where it allowed us to integrate huge amount of information, to easily communicate through single source of truth and exchange information, to have streamlined communication between stakeholders and many other benefits. But we still have to do a lot of manual and repetitive tasks to establish and constantly update this big database. As a result of this, huge amount of this project data layer are project specific information and you now have ability to reuse that knowledge and to utilize it on your future projects. Since BIM processes are mostly focused on exchange of project information instead of exchange of knowledge. Today we will try to present you a little bit different approach. Approach in which we placed knowledge management as a core of integrated BIM workflow. So let's start. As the core of all processes in BIM, we have established use of templates or configuration documents that could allow user to automate procedures and to reuse knowledge from previous projects. This is present from early model analysis throughout all following project phases. So for today's presentation, we will first go through process of basic model analysis and try to see the role of configuration documents or templates in this process and how use of these documents in your workflow could improve the overall performance. So let's move to the model. If we talk about basic model analysis, we in first place think about getting familiar with the model, you know, checking the data layer and geometry of the model, checking it, everything is in place, sorting model in certain ways. So uh, the first and the easiest tool that you can use in Bexel Manager for that is Building Explorer, which gives you uh, certain predefined breakdowns that organizes your model elements according to the data layer, the spatial structure, families and categories, systems or works structure. But in many cases, user need some specific sorting or specific breakdown for the elements. So um, in many cases, you need uh, uh, just a simple grouping of two or three elements that you just want to select and you just want to um, add a new selection set and name it, you know, we're going to just name it demo selection set, click OK, and we want to come back to this group of elements every time when we need them. But sometimes we also need to define uh, selection sets from the rules. That means that we want to have selection sets that could be updated with every new uh, model update. This means that we can just create a selection sets that will be organized based on a building story, let's say. So we want to include all the elements from entry level. And click OK. And there it is. These are the elements that are at this moment at entry level placed. So these are the basic functions. But Creating these selection sets every time from the beginning on every new project could be uh, annoying repetitive work. So what we have and what we have envisioned is a way to somehow create templates of smart selection sets that will allow user to predefine certain sorting of its uh, uh, model elements that is standardized for his uh, company, for his uh, uh, working process that could be uploaded on every new project. I'm going to show you just, just one really simple example where we're going to through this uh, open API add-in 
import selection set, predefined selection sets that are sorting, they're doing a very simple thing, they're just sorting the doors on this project uh, by the uh, category door and swing direction if it's left or right. So very, very simple example just for the beginning. So we just click open and there it is. We can now very easily isolate elements and very easily distinct left or right door. So this is very simple example. We can also demonstrate some more complicated ones like this one that organizes elements by uniformat code. So we had a, a, a bigger number of smart selection sets and we have a description for the groups of works and we have a defined query which finds all the elements that are related to this specific uniformat code. So we can just open it and if we open this selection set structure, we can just isolate groups of works or specific cost items, namely the elements that are part of this uniform at, uh, groups of works as they are described. But besides organizing elements into certain categories or certain groups that you need to use throughout your, your uh, model anal analysis process, sometimes you also want to visualize the data in your model and that is done mostly by custom breakdown. Custom breakdown allows you to visualize the properties of your model elements. That means that you are able to create custom breakdown structure that can organize, let's say in this case, model elements by building story. We're going to select all the elements in the model, use selection and just group them by building level. And we can use color coding rule that will uh, automatically colorize all the elements based on the property of building story where they are placed. So we're going to click the color coding rule, click OK and we're going to go to color coded view. And with this model we can see why this feature or this functionality is very important and crucial in the early phases of model analysis. You can see by looking at this model that multiple elements are actually placed on the wrong floor. That means that during the design period, designers were just ignoring the proper spatial organization of the model. So one traditional workflow is just to return the model back to authoring tool and to, to make the, the needed changes. Or if you're working in Bexel Manager, you have ability to select all the elements with the problematic uh, spatial structure to go to the manage tab to spatial structure which you can uh, actually edit and auto distribute all the elements so by simply clicking you are auto distributing elements on the corresponding floor based on their elevation and you can automatically have properly organized model elements when it comes to spatial structure. So these tools are very important in organizing an initial analysis of your model. Another interesting example of implementation of this predefined templates for selection set is in infrastructure. This is our infrastructure demo model created in Provi authoring tool. It has uh, for every section of this railway line and access roads, it has defined a set of properties that are defining the spatial structure of this model. That means that we have a property that define the axis. So it distincts three different axes in this project, the axis of railway line, uh, access road one and access road two and it also defines start and 
and change uh, property for every segment. But if we want to specify sections or the change of this infrastructure project, that means if we want to segregate it into uh, equally long uh, sections of this linear infrastructure uh, uh, projects, let's say of 50 meters long, we would need to create a series of smart selection sets that will be based on these two properties, the, the axis and the change value, and that will combine multiple sections, multiple elements into, let's say, areas of 50 or 100 meters, uh, equally long, that will be uh, one step in execution, let's say. We can do that manually by simply creating a new selection set for every value and range between them, or we can again use uh, import of selection set templates and just we're going to just open this Excel file. You define the folder structure in your selection sets, uh, selection set names, and you define the query. In this case, we are using this property PVI stat1 and PVI stat bis, and we are defining the values between those properties of 50 meters long and we are defining to which axis it belongs. So this first one will belong to the first axis, the second group of change will belong to the second axis and the third one to the 220B to the third axis. So we're going to just simply open this Excel and we will have our model organized by changes by sections of 50 meters long and we have created numerous selection sets smart selection sets that could be used in the further um, work with the model and analysis and you spend less time than just creating it manually so right now we can even go and let's say visualize this data we can select these elements go to custom breakdown create new custom breakdown let's call it axis one we're gonna use selected elements and we're gonna group the elements by selection sets so we're gonna just simply select all the selection sets we're gonna use color coding and we're gonna go to color coded view and there it is complete railway line is segregated into sections of 50 meters long by simply using Excel spreadsheet and defining these sections. Besides advanced implementation of selection set import workflow, here I would like to demonstrate some more advanced implementation of CBS templates in early project analysis. So in this case we have two versions of the same model. So we have initial version with, with the initial structural design and we have optimized model with optimized structure. So what we want to check is the reinforcement distribution on this structural element. So first of all we're gonna isolate structural elements and we're going to just check one of the elements check its properties and we will see that we have property that defines the mass in kilograms for every element in this uh, in this model so what we can first do we can create a quick custom breakdown let's say reinforcement CBS that will group all the elements by this property. We can color code it, go to 3D color coded view and see, okay, of course we have a lot of different values. So we can repeat this on the second model as well. But what we actually need here is we have to create the new property that will 
automatically calculate the amount of reinforcement per cubic meter of certain elements. How are we going to do that? We're going to select the elements again, add the new property. We're going to name it, let's say, test reinforcement kilograms per cubic meter. We're going to add a new group, let's say, Pexel added properties. We're going to leave it as, as numeric property. And instead of adding the value by ourselves, we're going to create a function that will calculate the value. So first of all, we're going to find the reinforcement mass property, and we're going to divide it by volume of the element in order to get this metric that we need. So we're going to click OK. OK. Now we're going to use it for the new CBS from selected elements. And we're going to find this new property that we have created. It was named test reinforcement kilograms per cubic meters. We can color coded and now we see that the elements are grouped by certain values but what we would like to see we would like to see a range from the lower uh, reinforcement density to the elements of the upper reinforcement density and for this in our company we have predefined template that color codes the elements for example from the uh, from, from from the higher to the lower value of this property and we can just simply import this property to visualize this metric so we're going to create new cbs from uh, selected elements we're going to say reinforcement density use selection and instead of creating cbs we're going to import template already prepared template that groups the elements based on this value into groups of uh, uh, in, into groups of difference of 10 kilograms per cubic meter and color code them gradually from the the higher values to the lower values you're gonna see how it looks like so we're gonna open this template and we got all the structural elements colored according to the values of this newly added property. If we repeat this process for another version of our model and go to the color coded view, we're going to spot the differences. So if we hide, let's say, the elements of slabs and beams, we're going to see the impact of the optimization of our structural works on the vertical elements. So we see that the, the amount of uh, reinforcement density is significantly lowered compared to the initial model version. And not only this, this could be also used for evaluation of different design variations. We're going to check that as well. We can see in this example, which is a little bit modified design, if we hide beams and slabs, that there is again a difference that is not part of the optimized or not optimized structure, but simply because it's a different solution, it requires different amount of reinforcement density in this case, comparing to the simple straight building and for the end of this workflow we're going to just create a quantity takeoff to confirm the final quantities of the reinforcement that we were inspecting through cbs analysis so we're going to go back to selection sets we're going to turn on and select all the structural elements create 
new QTO from selected elements. We're going to name it reinforcement QTO, use selected elements. We're going to group elements by building. We're going to group it by category. And we're going to add quantity reinforcement mass. Click OK. We're going to color code it by category. And here we see the overall quantity of the of the reinforcement. We're going to check how it looks like in 3D view. And right now we can save this QTO template. We're going to name it QTO reinforcement. And what we can do, we can transfer these QTOs to the other models to check the overall quantity. So we're going to different model, quantity takeoff. Again, we're going to turn on and select all the structural elements. We're going to create new QTO. We're going to name it again reinforcement QTO, use selected elements and instead of recreating the QTO analysis we're gonna import template and we're gonna see the difference in quantity so if we compare this unoptimized model with the optimized one we're gonna see difference in quantities so 2,456,000 kilograms versus 2,275,000. And if we repeat the same for the, the third model, and just go to the quantity takeoff, we're going to see that here the reinforcement quantity is even further increased due to complexity of the geometry of this particular design solution. So after we have covered the workflows in initial basic B model analysis, we will continue with the next stage of uh, 3D B model functionalities that is data validation process. As you all know, a uh, majority of information in BIM is the data layer, not geometry itself. The geometry itself is like a frame, but the data layer is the core of building information modeling. So controlling and establishing this data layer and checking its validity is a crucial process in BIM management in general. And due to amount of data that is integrated, it is also a very challenging process to do. That's why we have envisioned, again, a very similar approach with, as with the, with the previous uh, functionalities and workflows, that user is able to use predefined information delivery specifications in the form of predefined templates that is automatically loaded through OpenAPI in Bexel Manager and software algorithms are performing the analysis and finding all the elements that are not according to specifications defined in IDS. So at the end of the process user is able to uh, easily check huge amount of data and to share the results with uh, stakeholders in the form of BCF files or in the form of Power BI report. We're going back to our demo project where we perform the CBS and selection set analysis of the model and this time we will try to perform automated data check for the complete data layer of this model including all the elements in the model. That means that we don't have to select some specific parts. Uh, we can just apply the, the 
IDS rules to the whole model. So to do that, we'll go simply to the add-in and run property checker add-in. We'll simply open a configuration document. We're going to open our IDS template to check the structure of this document. So to perform a good data validation analysis, user needs to properly define the structure of the database that he wants to achieve in the model. And this is achieved through defining the project phases according to which data check or data validation process will be customized. And it defines the set of properties for every category in this case for this uh, uh, data checker. Of course, OpenAPI leaves a room for customization of these um, data checkers so it is not limited to the categories the data layer could be based on some different property as well but for this standardized add-in it is based on the category as as the one of the basic properties of every B model so for every category user is able to define parameter name property set in which this parameter should be placed, the value type of the parameter, phase in which these parameters should be added. This is very important because data validation analysis has to include the fact that in different phases of the project, you don't need the same amount and you don't need the same type of information populated in the model. And the last column is a key the key represents those values where you have a limited amount of uh, valid values for this property and you can just define the list in a pick list of the valid format and valid values of these uh, populated uh, properties and you can restrict that for these specific uh, categories or groups of elements certain properties should be populated from this list only. If they are not, the checker algorithm will identify it as an error. So let's go back and let's open this information delivery specification list. Now it is loaded in the program and now we are defining in which phase our project is at this moment. So we're going to say that it's in design development phase and based on this our validation process will be customized and we define if we want to use all elements on, in the project or only selected elements because you know sometimes you don't have to check the whole project you are maybe just checking one discipline or one part of the project that was updated so we're gonna use all elements in the project as I said and we're gonna just click run so data validation process is now complete and results are organized in the form of series of selection sets organized by first by category as the IDS was organized in this way and then into selection sets which are named after the error that was identified in these groups of elements. So let's try to isolate these elements and see which they are. So these are the elements that don't have property height defined in the group dimensions even though it was requested by the IDS. So in this way user automatically gets the selection sets or the groups of all the elements that have certain properties failed to be uh, defined according to information delivery specifications. And not only that, you're also able to exchange this information via OpenBIM format using BCF Manager where you can simply drag and drop selection set or groups of selection sets and BCF files will be automatically creating, created with the information 
about the, the issue that happened and the group of elements that are related to this specific result. Of course, this could be exchanged via any open beam uh, platform and it could be opened, for example, uh, from the side of designer and the whole problems in data validation could be easily resolved and easily communicated between stakeholders. So besides uh, exchange and communication of operational results of the model data check analysis, user also, also has ability to export extensive analytics in the form of Power BI report to report the sort of data health check of the model. It could be done in the same window as with the property checker analysis and report information is exported simply by clicking export to Power BI. Export is completed so we can open the file. So if we open exported Power BI report, you can see total required number of properties, total entered properties, total properties with proper value type, with defined values and total properties with value from checklist. We can as well see the the health check status of the model by different uh, metrics in terms of percentage of, of, uh, of uh, successfully uh, added properties and we can see a full list of added properties by category and we also have ability to filter all of these statistics by category of the model element like this or by a specific property so we can say I don't know system name let's say and we can see how this property is populated in the elements that were required to have this property. Besides data validation process, another important workflow in um, data management in BIM is data enrichment. Having in mind need for uh, intelligent knowledge management, this process is also established in Bexel Manager in a way that it allows user to use predefined configuration documents or templates that are imported in uh, software in the same manner as with the data validation process. So user is able to define its information delivery specification to define the rules uh, based on which BIM model is enriched with the new data. Information delivery specification format is completely open and customizable and it could be related to standardized cost classifications, BSDD, Uniformat, Master Format, DIN 276 or any other customized range of data that you need to populate in your model. In order to demonstrate data enrichment process we're gonna use this larger model with four different buildings and a landscape defined around it. Uh, in this case we have model that does not contain any properties related to cost classification and we will try to enrich this model with a predefined information delivery specification which will specify uniform code based on the existing category, family and some additional properties that are defined in our configuration document. So to start we just need to go to add-ins to import properties from Excel add-in and for the first enrichment we're going to use data enrichment template for uniformat. I'm going to open the Excel file just to discuss its content. So configuration document is configured in a way that user is able to define the property set in which newly added properties will be placed, uh, type of the newly added properties, if it's a text, numeric, boolean. It is able to define, of course, names of the newly added properties and 
with this latest update of this add-in now user is able to define unlimited number of new properties at once so it's not limited to one property only and on the left side user is able to define unlimited number of the existing properties that are using as the rule for enriching the existing uh, model so in this case we are using category uh, family is not used so that this ITS uh, could be more general uh, system group name in some cases and if it's a structural or non-structural elements in some groups of works that require such distinction so we're gonna close this configuration document and just click open data import is successfully completed and we have automatically created selection sets smart selection sets based on the rules that were used in configuration document that could serve for the the checking process of how many elements were actually enriched based on the on the data defined in configuration document so if we go to some of the elements we can see that we have newly added property set named Bexel added with two new properties uniformat code and uniformat description added to the model elements uh, in order to check the whole model we can create new custom breakdown so we're gonna create blank custom breakdown we're gonna use all elements in the model we're gonna name it uniformat and group by property newly added property uniformat code we're gonna also add additional property uniformat description we're gonna color code it and if we go to the 3d color coded view we're gonna see all the elements that were enriched using this predefined configuration file based on which the elements in this model are enriched with uniformat codes relying on existing properties such as category system or structural use we're gonna go back to selection sets and 3d view and we're gonna perform one more uh, enrichment process but this time using predefined configuration document for DIN 276 codes and description so let's open it so in the same way as with the uniformat codes this time we're using just uh, uh, two additional properties that will define DIN 276 code and DIN 276 description in German so this gives you opportunity to enrich the same model with multiple different cost classifications or multiple different customized data sets not limited to classifications itself so we're gonna click open data enrichment process is now completed and we got another set of selection sets that are containing the smart selection sets for controlling which elements are actually enriched regarding the newly added DIN 276 uh, classification and if we if we click to some of the group of the elements we're gonna see that right now in the Bexel added property set we have four added properties two related to DIN 276 code and description and two to uniformat code and uniformat description the next important workflow is checking or validation of project geometry or clash detection. Bexel Manager offers four different clash detection modules, hard clash, clearance clash, duplicate clash and containment clash. But what is the most unique and most important about clash detection process in Bexel Manager is that it also relies on intelligent knowledge management and configuration documents as the basis. That means that uh, clash jobs and clash matrix could be predefined, could be standardized as a process within the company and could be 
reused on every new project. And once executed, Clash Analysis results could be exported in the form of uh, OpenBIM BCF files, uh, in the form of uh, PDF, uh, HTML, Power BI or Excel reports, as well as using OpenAPI, it could be used for the additional model enrichment using API scripts and relations between elements within the Clash. And we're going back to our large scale project to demonstrate automated clash detection process. And for this process, we have to once again utilize predefined selection sets because with the predefined selection sets, we can actually prepare the groups of elements that will be confronted within clash jobs. So first of all, we're going to import selection sets. We're going to open configuration document and here we can see a series of predefined selection sets that are sorting model elements based on certain rules based on certain general pro properties that are uh, present in the model and in this way we are creating the groups of elements and groups of works that we're going to confront using clash matrix so if we click open we will have clash selection sets based upon which we can establish our clash matrix. If we go to clash detection module, we're going to see that in this model we don't have any clash jobs. So we will have to import clash detection templates. We can do it by simply importing it from Excel. We're going to once again inspect configuration file and here we can see that we just simply defining the clash job name in this case we are naming it according to clash priorities and then we are defining left and right clash detection groups based on the predefined selection sets that we have just imported in the project uh, we define clash type clash tolerance and we define if we're going to exclude or include clashes within the group. So very simple configuration document that is relying upon another configuration document that was imported before the template. So we're going to click open and we have 37 clash jobs imported successfully. But what we still have to do is we have to update these clash jobs so we're gonna check update all and update all clash jobs at once all clash jobs are updated and this is a large scale model it took a little bit more time now we're gonna check one of the clash jobs And now we're able to check every distinctive clash within this model. And all 37 clash jobs are automatically imported and automatically updated at once. What we are also able to do, we are able to overview the clash matrix for this project. So all 37 clashes defined within this clash matrix and we are also able to group clashes by left or right element in the group so we can we can select all the clashes in this clash job and group elements in multiple groups by left or right element or into single group as, as a one single group of clashes we're gonna use multiple groups and we're going to group it by the left element or uh, walls and now we can see that clashes are grouped by the left element so we can check some of the clashes and automatically we get much more organized clashes within this model of course the same as with the data validation user is able to use BCF manager to exchange clashes 
with other stakeholders. User is able to send one or multiple clashes at the time or clash groups at the time and to create BCF files and send it to other stakeholders for, for coordination. Besides this, user is also able to export uh, data in Excel format, to export Clash reports in a PDF file format, or it can export a Power BI report only for the Clash jobs. Export is completed and we can now open exported file. When we open export file, we can see distribution of clashes per floor. We can filter clashes by clash job. We can see the number of clashes per clash job. And we can go through detail list of clashes as well as see number of clashes per categories in the model. Also very useful metric that could give you idea where are the biggest problems in your model. And in general, it gives you a, a lot of filters that are related to building, to category in the, the first category family in the clash, to the clash job you want to check, and with all these filters you can go to in-depth analysis for every clash and every clash job in the model and everything is ready for presentation in every moment. And now I would like to present you a really interesting advanced workflow that will combine several workflows that we have explained in the previous part of the session and that will allow us to utilize clash detection analysis, namely containment clash analysis, to enrich model data. How we're gonna perform it? We're gonna perform containment analysis, which will identify all the elements of the furniture that are contained in certain rooms or spaces in this model, and using relations and using uh, custom API script, we will be able to enrich these model elements with the name of a room in which these elements are contained. So let's start. If we want to execute clash detection analysis on this model, we will have to import selection sets for clashes. So here we have clash selection sets for this model. We can open this Excel table. The table is very similar to the file that we were using for the sample model clash detection as the basis. In this case, it also sorts elements into architecture and by categories into structural and only for MEP and landscape, we have less categories since the model is in the early stage of development. So if we close the table and finish import of selection sets, we're going to see that all the selection sets for our clash detection are ready. The preparation of clash detection template is again the same as on the sample model. So we're going to just import clash matrix from Excel. We're going to check the file. And we can see that configuration file is structured in the same way as with the previous example. Only with this workflow, we're going to focus on these four containment clash, clash jobs or clash analysis, which will serve as the basis for our data enrichment process. So let's close the Excel file, click open, and 23 clash jobs have been imported. To our model and right now we only have to update all the clashes so since we have a lot of elements to check clash job update will take some time
Okay, our update is completed. We can now check results. So if we click to one of the clashes, we're going to see all the elements of furniture that are contained within certain bedroom or some other space because we have a huge number of clashes here. As we can see, we have a lot of clashes and we have a lot of elements contained within it. So the next step is to select all the clashes in this clash job in particular and to set relation. So we're going to set relation contained in the room, which will actually add relation to every element in this clash job. It will add the relation to the room it is contained in. So if we go and select right side of this clash job, and if we go to properties, relations, we're going to see that now we have relation to this space where this element is contained in. So the next step is to enrich this element and all the elements that were in this clash job with the name of the type of room where they are contained in. So to do that we can again select all the clashes. We're going to select right side of this clash job which means that we are selecting the, the contained element. We're going to go out of the clash view mode and we're going to show selected elements. So we have a lot of selected elements, we can isolate it. So all the furniture on the project is contained within some rooms. So if we select all this furniture and if we use an API script that is named element space name script, we can double click it, this script should write down the property called contained in room and it should be placed in a property group named backsell. So if we click execute, very quickly the, the, the script is executed and if we check some of the elements and go back to properties, there it is. We have contained in room property, it's called closet. So this is placed in a, in a room that's called closet. This one is in a kitchen. So the last step is that we want to utilize this property and we want to create a CBS that will color code all the furniture on this project based on the name of the room they're contained in. So we can just go to the custom breakdowns. We can again select the furniture, create a new CBS from selected elements. We're going to call it furniture contained in use selection and we're going to just group it by property called contained in room we're going to check color coding there it is we have all the rooms that have contained elements of furniture if we go to the 3d color coded view we can definitely easily see which furniture is contained in which type of room. So again, as with the previous example, this is just one of the possible applications for this advanced workflows, but I believe that users could find many more. And at the end, as a sort of wrap up of these advanced 3D workflows in Bexel Manager, I would like to give you a, a sort of sneak preview into something that we are developing at the moment. Uh, it's, a, it's a new product from Bexel. It's named Bexel Portfolio Manager. And this online application will give user opportunity to manage complete portfolio of its investments. That means multiple projects and multiple versions of the same project according to numerous parameters. So here I'm just going to give you a brief preview of some of the platform's features which will allow user to control some 3D parameters of 
its portfolio of investments. So for beginning, here we can see an overall uh, view for the complete portfolio of our projects, which gives you a metric of number of buildings for every project, number of model elements, uh, number of families, sources and work set, for instance. But the whole platform contains numerous different analysis as well. For example, right now we see aggregated information for all the projects and all the versions of the projects that we have in our portfolio. Uh, here we can filter it only to actual version. Hit OK. And we can see only the actual versions of every project or we can just limit it to one of the projects, let's say Harmony Park Residential Complex, and we can see the information for this project only. These are just the, the basic Model Explorer uh, information, which gives us information about the number of buildings for every different version of this project, uh, number of elements, so we can see that naturally element, element numbers are increasing from the initial version to the more developed B model version, uh, number of families, uh, complexity in terms of number of sources, number of work sets, everything is increasing and you are able to check statistics on all of these versions of your project. But this is just one of the possible uh, examples we can also check the data health of our models so we can go and find IDS overall check now we see the new metrics we can switch to another project let's say the Breezeway residential complex and here we can see the detailed metrics as well as charts that are showing us the status of uh, health check in, the, in this project throughout the different versions. We can also customize the charts, so we can rotate charts if we want to see it in a, in, in a different way or return it back. We can see the same analysis in terms of percentage, so we can see the percentage of populated properties for every different versions. Again, we can see that numbers are increasing throughout the, the new installments of the new versions of the project, which is natural, which is normal. And we see that the, the, the percentages are over 80% in the version 5 for, for most of the metrics. So it seems that this uh, model health check is pretty decent at this moment. If we go through other 3D key performance analysis, we can check clash detection table, for instance. We can reconfigure the data very easily by drag and dropping the, the series of, of data streams. Um, we can find another project, so we can try the Harmony Park for this analytics. Um, we can change the to the stacked bar and again we can see how the number of clashes first increased in the first period of the project and then slowly decreased with more and more number of clashes that are sold. We can show the labels to see the numbers of the sold clashes of uh, low priority clashes, high priority clashes. Again very interesting metric that Gives, that can give us an idea about the status of the every model that we are handling with our platform. We can see uh, more detailed data in the table as well. We have ability to export data to, to Excel file. We can change it to another project to see how it handles the changes. So let's say this one. So it looks like this. We're also able to turn off certain uh, information if we want. So let's say we want to remove number of sold clashes in order to see only the clashes uh, that are active, that are problem problematic, that, that are 
classified as active clashes. Here we can see even better the statistics of the clash solving on this project. And we can see various other information on the project that is related mostly to 4D and 5D and my colleague will show you this analysis in the in the second part of this presentation as well. Another interesting feature of this platform is also integrated beam viewer. So this is an integration of Bexel Manager model and certain limited functionalities of Bexel Manager with Autodesk Forge. It will give our users possibility to review the models online and to use certain functionalities of Bexel Manager through this online viewer. So the user will be able to select elements, to isolate it, to review it, to, to make selection sets, to send information about the progress. Let's say user is able to check the groups of works easily, to inspect the model, to easily select and isolate data and many additional functionalities. As I said, all of these are features that are in development and we are expecting that uh, this will be released at the beginning of the next year. So now I would like to hand over presentation to my colleague Mileta Pejovic who will give you uh, insight into advanced 4D, 5D workflows in Bexel Manager and I want to thank you for your time and I hope that you enjoyed in first part of this session. Good day to everyone from my side. Thank you all for joining us again in such a large number. Also, I have to thank to Alexander. That was a really great demonstration and a very clear explanation of common workflows used to automate processes related to 3D BIM analysis using Bexel Manager and uh, a great showcase of its latest improvements and new features. My name is Mileta Pejovic and as a continuation to a previous demonstration, I will show you processes for 5D cost management using our platform. Since my colleague Alexander already presented workflows and new features for automated data management, beam checks and advanced clash detections and collision management, I will also use some of these workflows and features to automate processes of preparing a model for 5D beam simulation. Before I start uh, with the demonstration, I would also like to remind you again that all materials that will be presented today, including sample models, template files and used add-ins or scripts, will be uploaded to our user area. So all of you who are already using Bexel Manager, whether it's full or trial version, you will all be able to download these materials for free and use them on your projects. We are frequently and constantly updating new, fil new files and updating our user area materials, so stay in touch and visit our site. In the description of this video, we'll leave the link to our web page as well. So the topic of the second part of today's webinar is 5D management. So I'll introduce you to the BIM-based cost and schedule management and in integrated BIM processes to make a BIM project ready for 5D simulation. Firstly, we need to extract and use model data and relate it to quantity and cost calculation. So I'll demonstrate how to use or create cost classifications and respective cost items based on BIM data and then the system will use all these information to link BIM elements to cost data and generate a bill of quantities. I will also present some of new features and improvements which can help you to manage cost information more efficiently and after that I will explain how to use our intelligent BIM-based scheduling engine to generate location-based schedules 
and create feasible 5D animations. Um, before I start, I just want to point out that in order to automate your processes, you need to at least follow specific project guidelines or standards. Our approach is to use all available data from BIM in most efficient way, relying on machine-readable formats. So if you follow common standards or at least project-specific guidelines, you can always automate some of the processes and reuse common information from one project and apply it to another, as long as these different projects are following the same or similar guidelines or standards. This process map explains BIM-based cost management, which we are using in Bexel Manager. Today I'll try to demonstrate a typical workflow when you as a BIM manager, planner, cost manager or anyone related to the project needs to create or complete their part of work regardless of the qu quality of BIM files that you are using and that you are generating. Of course, the better BIM data you're using, the more processes you can automate. So usually, we receive or generate multiple BIM files segregated by disciplines or by buildings and we need to create a federated project. Based on BIM quality and developed LOI or LOD, there are a few ways to make a proper cost breakdown structure and cost database in Bexel Manager. This will be a basis for automated quantity takeoff and cost estimation. This sample project contains seven different source models for major disciplines and for the landscape. Uh, BIM elements in this example contain added properties for classification according to uniformat and master format classification and also added property which can be used for spatial zoning or construction phasing. So everything usually starts with a proper breakdown structures and element grouping and therefore to group BIM elements I will load Excel template for creating smart selection sets. This one is uh, relatively advanced since uh, it contains multiple selection set groups uh, based on different properties, but even though it looks complicated, all rules which are used are quite simple and based on default BIM properties such as categories, file name, work sets or layer used for modelings, so these rules can be easily modified and used for any project and they will work. Alexander already showed how to import selection set from Excel files and once we have our selection sets imported, we can explore it if rules are working for this project and briefly inspect created groups. You see groups used for clash checks, groups for construction phases, which will be used for scheduling and groups by work types for each major discipline. Structural work groups, some groups for architectural works, interior work groups, ceilings, uh, some of the MEP works, plumbing, HVAC, electrical fixtures, and even rooms grouped by functions, by different functions of each room. I also loaded some additional sets that group walls by specific properties such as functions, for example. Using these groups, we can generate quantity takeoffs and organize quantity takeoff breakdown structure based on selection sets first, and then by common model information such as category, type, family name, or similar. The main idea here is to create a breakdown structure which can be used to generate entire cost classification using our tool for that. I've already prepared quantity takeoff templates which can make this process even faster so we don't have to uh, manually recreate breakdown structure every time. I will load one of 
these templates for breakdown structure according to groups of works. So, may, so you may see that generated quantity takeoff uh, is organized by selection sets and they by, then by common properties. So this quantity takeoff can be analyzed, edited, or you may add additional calculations to it. The quantity takeoff is instantly related to BIM elements, so you may interactively select items and model elements will be selected automatically. You can isolate and visually review elements included in quantity takeoff. And I will give you a little tip here. If sometimes in quantity takeoffs you find uh, undefined items, you can easily select and examine what and where these elements are. In this case, these undefined selection sets are all masses or mass elements or voids which we used for openings. So I will use the option remove elements from takeoff. You can create multiple quantity takeoff analysis and review it in color coded view. Also, all generated quantity takeoffs can be exported into Excel files as quantity takeoff reports. In this prepared example, I will just show you some of the created quantity takeoff breakdown structures that you can make and use. And this one is uh, the one I've already explained. The next one is based on selection sets and uniformed properties added to elements. So you may see how this quantity takeoff breakdown is created. First based on selection sets and then by element properties. The color coded view helps you to visually separate quantity takeoff items based on their color. This one, for example, is made based on master format properties and can be useful to easily identify specific materials in your project. Um, this method can be used on every project. The only exception is if a BIM project is modeled in specific software, which doesn't allow you to uh, export IFC files or where IFC exports cannot be fully customized. These projects usually contain only IFC element proxies or so-called generic models and this is very common for infrastructure projects or power plant projects. Even in that case, we can still use any existing property to make some breakdown structure or to functionally determine elements. This example project is uh, created in Smart Plant software for uh, designing um, specific facilities such as this one and you can see that all elements are recognized as generic models but using properties such as in this case uh, WBS parent we managed to make quantity takeoff breakdown structure and cost classification additionally which is used for cost estimation and scheduling. So once we have created these quantity takeoff breakdowns, the next step uh, to make this project BIM ready is to convert quantity takeoff breakdown into cost classification. So cost editor is the module for cost classification and it is a cost database while assign items module is a cost estimation mod module or a place where you can create your bill of quantities and manage your cost versions. Note that cost editor contains tab for cost item definitions and resources. Cost item definitions is a database for all cost items from all classifications and resources tab is a database of all resources specified in your project. More detailed explanation how to create and edit resources you can find on our video recordings of our previous webinars, such as this one from June this year, for example. Firstly, we need to specify the name for our cost database and using option new classification, I will provide a name for this new cost classification. 
To generate cost structure, I will use Creation Wizard option which is available on a right mouse click and then select from Quantity Takeoff. For auto coding, I'll choose Schema and initially I will use Count for Quantity Formula. If you want to adjust the coding scheme, and uh, you can do it uh, right here using Define Code. Uh, and again, these options for editing cost database are more explained in our previous webinars, so today I won't explain them in detail. Once the structure is created, all cost items are made intelligently, containing rules to auto-link each cost item with model elements, and you may see that each cost item has element query or linking rule defined based on quantity takeoff hierarchy that we used when we created quantity takeoff. The last thing we need to do is to add all necessary cost information and calculation formulas to each cost item. By editing cost items directly here in Bexel Manager, we can change and add general information such as daily output, quantity type, and lastly unit price. In most projects, it's enough to just type in unit prices from the market and it will be used in calculation, for example $300 per cubic meter in this case. And in case that you're a subcontractor and you need to plan your expenses, you may want to form unit price using resources. Finally, we need to specify calculation formula so the system can calculate project cost by uh, multiplying unit and formula specified here. You can set any property to be used for calculation or you can specify complex formulas by mixing several properties or by calculating properties and added numbers or factors. This time I will just uh, simply select volume property from the list of all available properties. Before applying this to the project and calculating cost, we can check if model elements are linked to specific cost items and if automatically created linking rules are working. It seems fine. But you can always use automated system check and check if elements are applicable for cost assignment. That's another tool explained in one of our previous sessions. So once we have our cost structure in Bexel Manager, we can use export option and export it to Excel for easier editing. This one is called BIM based cost classification and when it's opened, this is the file format. Classification sheet uh, shows you cost database and all relevant data that you can edit. You may see all the columns for information and in this case we will just edit columns for daily output, quantity type and unit and also calculation formula and unit price. The first sheet in document provides help how to use entire Excel file. I'll show you already the same Excel file which is updated and know that uh, if you just want to use unit prices from the market without using resources, you need to populate column called fixed unit cost uh, and all other information for daily output Quantity types and formulas are also updated and populated for all cost items. Once we have the file saved, we can import this cost database back in Bexel and apply it. Using import button, I'll select updated Excel file and open it. All the updates are refreshed in Bexel Manager and we have our BIM-based cost classification ready for cost calculation. To calculate bill of quantities, I will use option Auto Assign Cost Items to link this database with model elements and calculate quantities and cost. 
the new cost version will be created and the system will automatically do all job for us. When the process is finished, uh, in AutoSign tab, we have our bill of quantities created with all quantities and prices according to, to cost breakdown structure automatically calculated. Uh, selecting items from the list, we can select linked beam elements and inspect them in, in a 3D view. Structural or architectural elements with calculated prices, as you may see. But we could also do the vice versa and uh, select some of the elements from 3D view using selection set groups, for example MEP selection sets some randomly selected elements from 3D view and using option filter by element selection we can find the respective cost items in our BOQ. In case that uh, you or your company already have standardized cost classification that you are using the process is even easier. You just need to import your cost classification from Excel and edit rules, if needed, to comply with the specific guidelines for your project. This here is cost database based on uniformed classification, containing cost item definitions, resources, calculation formulas, and all other necessary data and rules for linking with BIM elements according to uniformed code. All the resources are added in resource database, and the file is ready to be imported in the Bexel Manager. Note again that rules for linking are using simple property values by Uniformat. Um, this new classification will be called Uniformat classification. And using import option again, we'll making Uniformat classification in Bexel Manager. When imported, you can check cost items and linking rules if everything is OK. Using auto assign again, we'll create a new bill of quantity for the same project, but this time based on uniformed classification and using formulas and prices from this database. So each Bexel project can have multiple cost databases and cost versions. Now we can review this cost version and uh, since this imported database has resources information I will add new columns to see more cost information. You can select from very comprehensive list of available columns to add in this uh, viewer. Another important thing is adding additional costs, which are commonly used in projects, but which are not related to any 3D element. These could be cost for preparation works, for consulting or design services, administrative costs and similar. And to add this cost, we need to specify these types of works in our cost structure. This uniformed cost classification already have items for some of these activities, such as, for example, administrative requirements. If we want to add this to our cost version, we need to add a new cost assignment and select cost items that we want to include. From the already existing list, we will select these works. And once these items are added, we just need to specify cost. The price was initially added as a, as a lump sum price, which can be easily changed. So in this case, I will change price for design and coordination activities based on unit price calculated per square meter, where I will manually change planned gross area for this entire project, uh, in this case, 37,000 square meters. 
in case we want to add variable costs to cost items, we can do it here and it's also available. Very easy by specifying percent or cost uh, for additional variable expenses. For design, I'll just add taxes. And I will select all other cost items now and add tax and general markup for variable expenses for all cost classification items based on uniformat classification. The system recalculates entire bill of quantity and we can see all these information just by adding respective columns here in, in this viewer. The new and extremely useful feature in Bexel Manager is the ability to organize and reorganize and change entire cost version by changing breakdown structure. Even though you calculate cost versions according to specific cost classification, when it comes to tendering process and creating tendering packages, we need some flexibility to change default cost structure. So to make this process possible, we added new options. By right-click on mouse, firstly, I will ungroup assignment which is existing, and as a result, we have a flat table for all items. You can always revert it back uh, to default breakdown by using option group by classification. We're using similar creation wizard for creating schedule hierarchy. We can use all available references and created breakdown hierarchy for bill of quantity. Fixed from this list means that hierarchy items will be created only from selected references and dynamic means that the system will create hierarchy items from leaves of selected references. So I will use that option in this case and select references from our selection sets for groups of works. For next hierarchy level I will use selection sets for structural, architectural, MEP discipline and landscape. And now I will select option fixed because I want to explicitly use buildings and I will set buildings as the first level of our hierarchy. If we need even deeper hierarchy, we could use for example building levels as the last reference. Hit OK and wait for a few seconds. So now the system created new breakdown structure for entire bill of quantity based on buildings and then group of works and levels. Undistributed cost items in this case are for added non-beam related cost items since they don't have relation to beam elements or buildings. All other items are organized as we wanted, as you may see, and we can now select or review cost items and elements much, much easier. You may see that created bill of quantity items are organized by buildings, then by work groups, and lastly by levels. And now it's much easier to prepare tendering packages which can be organized according to any breakdown structure that you, that you want or need for the project. Also, it is much easier to identify 3D elements in, in a view which are related to each cost item but in this case, for example, by buildings. As almost everything in Bexel Manager, bill of quantities can be exported into Excel files, provide a name for it, and that's it. So this is the format of exported Excel file. You can see that it has the same breakdown structure and all information exported from Bexel, including unit cost, and total cost, cost for all resources if specified, calculation formulas for quantities, name and code for each cost item. Uh, so now if needed, these files can be used for tendering purposes. I will now go back and create a different breakdown structure of our cost version. Firstly, uh, we need to ungroup the existing one and then 
use a creation wizard again. This time, again, I will use buildings for the first hierarchy level. For the second level of hierarchy, I will use uniform at classification level. Hit OK. And for the last hierarchy level, I will use building levels selection sets as a reference. This time, I will save breakdown rules as a template, so next time we can just apply it. Name it and hit OK. And the system takes a few seconds, but when completed, we have our customized bill of quantity breakdown. It has all the buildings, uniformat items, and levels for each building. And now it's easy to plan expenses for each discipline on each story or uh, for each building. And we can very easy visually review all related elements in a view. The next very useful feature is possibility to filter cost version and find cost assignments which are not related to BIM elements. To demonstrate this, uh, I will ungroup this cost version and use this option here to filter assignments without elements. Now you see only these items that we manually added and these are not related to 3D elements. Another way to export all cost information is using Power BI exports. Also, we can use some of numerous scripts to add additional cost data from cost classification and cost estimation directly to BIM elements as a properties. These scripts uh, and results are also presented in our previous webinar, so you can download them for free from user area and use it. Another way to exchange added properties and cost information is by exporting the IFC files from Bexel Manager. The next step toward 5D BIM simulation is using all the BIM data created so far for intelligent planning and scheduling. Bexel Manager has intelligent BIM-based scheduling engine, which can be used to generate thousands of tasks and relation between these tasks, uh, and on top of that, everything is instantly related to BIM elements. So construction schedules are defined by works, work sequencing and their relation and by spatial organization of these works. This applies to almost all construction projects, uh, except for, for infrastructure projects or technical facilities, for example, where this could be uh, slightly different. In order to automate entire planning process, our engine is fully beam based and relies on zones and methodologies. In our engines, uh, zones are used for defining spatial organization of works and their relations, and using methodologies, you can set work sequencing and apply planner's logic. Usually, building levels and project phases are specified as, as zones, and then the system intelligently combines all zones with all methodology items. Based on predefined rules and relations, the engine spreads down methodology work items through the zones and generates entire schedule with hundreds or thousands of tasks. The system will create as much as tasks as we have methodology items and multiply it by number of zones and levels in which these items are recognized from 3db model. In case that your model doesn't have all methodology items in all zones, the system finds only existing work items in that specific zone and smartly make links with the next or upcoming methodology item for that zone. All that just by reading available information from the model. Since we're limited with time, I'll just present the process of creating schedule using predefined methodologies. And again, if you need more detailed explanations on how to create entire methodology and what are different options and relations in methodology editor are, uh, such as copy to children and construct constructive relation, I suggest you to watch our webinar Advanced 5D Analysis and Smart 5D Cost Management. To understand how zones are working, 
I will create a few zones in this sample project. The first one will be buildings. Since we have two buildings in this project and landscape, and uh, checking create relation, the system will make default relations between zones, which is finished to start. You can change it or add it in our case and make each building to start when the previous is 30% complete. You can see that each zone item is related to project buildings. The next zone will be for building levels, where I will make relations finish to start between all levels. I will set levels to be constructive items and save this zone. And lastly, we can create a zone for construction phases, which is also related to selection sets. The system will use all these zones items to spread down our construction works from methodology definitions. So let me just briefly show you selection sets and elements which are now related to our zones. First, buildings, then construction phases, and building levels from selection sets. Uh, again, due to a time limitation, I will load a few prepared methodologies and creation templates from different projects and apply them in this project here. Using exchange option, I'll select exchange file, check templates and hit OK. This one here is loaded uniformat based methodology where all work are based on uniformat classification and all relations between work items are made for common construction project. Um, it is not extremely detailed, but again, it's not uh, a simple one either. So it can be used for most of the common projects. The second methodology is based on BIM-based cost classification breakdown, but as you may see, the relations and work sequencing between work items is very similar to previous one, because as I've said, most of common construction schedules are using the similar planning logic. So all methodology nodes are now linked to respective cost items. And since everything is assigned to our cost version, everything is also linked to 3D BIM elements. These methodologies are combined uh, with created zones to make schedule hierarchy. And these hierarchies are saved as a schedule creation templates that we can use as well. To create new schedule, we use Schedule Editor and Scheduling Options. And the new sample schedule I will create according to custom BIM-based cost classification and respective methodology as well. So the cost version will be this one. For creating good and feasible schedule, one of the most important things is even pace or even tempo of works. Therefore, our engine initially creates all tasks with equal duration, which is by default 40 working hours or standard working week of five working days. And to initialize intelligent schedule, we use creation wizard. This is the place to set schedule hierarchy using methodology and zone items. In this case, I will just use imported template and initial schedule is generated in just a few seconds. All tasks have names from methodology and zone items, and they also have same relations from methodology and zone items, and default duration for each task is 40 working hours. So using line of balance view, we can see more detailed preview of schedule activities per zones, and even though it's just initial auto-generated schedule, line of balance looks pretty decent. Another way to inspect our schedule is using task report when we can access combined cost and time information in form of cash flow charts, S-curve, resources, or activities even per day. All charts and information from this view can also be exported into Excel files. 
To finally preview 5D simulation, we use top schedule animation and the schedule view. All information such as activity legend and project and cost information can be set and adjusted using additional options for schedule animation. And again, for more details, you can find our tutorials and manuals explaining each tool. For more interesting videos, we can add cameras and create schedule animation. Animation can be exported as a high definition video files. Using the same method, we can create a new schedule for the same project, but this time using a slightly different methodology and creation templates. This one will use uniformat cost version since it will be based on uniformat methodology. I will load uniformat based template where this time schedule hierarchy will be executed by buildings and then by work items and levels. So when the schedule is generated, we can see all tasks, even expand the view to see it on entire screen. So you can see more than 2000 tasks created with all relations between, between these tasks and everything is linked to cost version. Line of balance view shows activities for two buildings now. And everything is interactive as you may see. S curve for this project looks like this and cash flow like this. Not ideal, but in a few clicks, this can be easily optimized using task leveling. Before I skip to schedule simulation, I will add a new column for duration per working day. You can also add many more columns here. To make this video visible, I will temporarily disable some of the information here and I will hide activity legend. So when we update schedule and plate, 5D simulation looks like this. Even though I'm not a planner, this simulation looks feasible. All works for both buildings are being executed using fast track methodology. And for initial schedule created that fast without any additional optimizations, we may agree that this is very impressive and useful. So now again, I will run a beta version of our platform because I want to show you another interesting upcoming feature. And that is one of highly requested features, how to automatically change and optimize task durations based on specified daily outputs, outputs and quantities of elements contained in these tasks. So to do that, we need daily output specified in cost editor, which we already did. And I will open one of these cost items. Even though we don't have resources added, we know daily output of our crew for each cost item, that's enough. I will briefly go back to schedule editor to show you where this option is. It's right here in task editor dropdown panel. And also before we apply it, Let's check how our line of balance looks like before we apply it, at least for structural works. I will go back and select structural elements because in this example I want to recalculate task durations only for structural works. So using option to select elements from cost items, I will select entire structure and filter only tasks containing these elements. So now for selected tasks, I will apply new option update task duration from daily output and based on quantities and daily outputs all selected tasks have recalculated and updated durations line of balance for structural works now looks like this now i see that some of activities has duration notably different than the common pace of uh, this activity for example beams so I can go back to our cost items for beams. From the classification structure, I will find and select structural concrete beam items. Select all of them. 
and change daily output from, let's say, 25 into 15. And hit OK. The change is instantly updated. And go back to Schedule Editor to apply this new option one more time. But this time only to tasks for beams. Once the durations are updated, we can check our Gantt, but more importantly, a line of balance to check if our activities are more accurate now. As you may see, beam activities are imp improved uh, in this case, and we again have something feasible. Before we approach to the end of today's session, and since we frequently receive questions about design changes and model updates, I would like to demonstrate the process of model update, in this case caused by notable design change, and uh, what are the consequences to our cost and schedule data. I will go back to our initial model, save it, and close it. And the process of updating is quite simple. We need to find the saved revision of our project in the list of our projects, select it, and use option update. We can change the name of revision and also we can add a description or any explanation if needed. And I will select new version of BIM files to update the project. In this case, I'm selecting new design for building one and totally new uh, source files for building two to be added to our project. During the process, the system will ask us to match BIM sources. Since my BIM files for building one have different names, I'll have to do it manually. For the second building, we'll specify a totally new source. In this case, I don't want to keep any deleted elements from previous version, since I already have it saved as a previous project revision. In this case, I just want to work with the, the latest design. Depending on the number of updated model sources, their size and number of the elements, and also depending on the complexity of model geometry that we are updating, but sometimes it could be finished in just a few minutes. This sample model contains more than 60 thousands of BIM elements, and it's not just a simple one. Once the project is updated, we open it and in a viewer you see the new updated model design. You may see a totally new building identified by system. And also in selection set folders, we have updated selection sets where we can find all elements added, newly added to the project. So now you you can see all these elements that didn't exist in our previous version. And before I start updating cost and schedule data, important thing is to assign all elements to proper levels. And since I know that curtain panels and mullions are usually uh, not assigned accurately at the beginning, I will use option from the system to auto distribute the elements. The system will match elements with the proper levels based on their physical position. After completion, we can briefly inspect if everything looks fine, so we could continue. It seems okay, so I'll go to Schedule Editor now. The good thing here is that we can have multiple schedules, so I will copy original one and make updates on it. Before making any schedule changes, we need to update cost information. Therefore, I will duplicate a bill of quantities and do cost updates on it. The new cost version will have a suffix called updated building, for example. So now we need to make updates for all new elements. All elements that are existing with changed properties are updated automatically but all new elements have to be added by user. I will select all added elements from selection sets 
and then use option auto assign cost items to selected elements instead of creating a new cost version. I will just update the previously duplicated one. It can take some time, but when the process is completed, we can check result. Go to Assigned Items and see the updated cost. All the quantities and prices are recalculated and another important thing is adding new building to our zones if we want to see it in our schedule. So I will go to Building Zones and add new one and make schedule relations with the tower building. The final thing before update is to edit cost version applied to this schedule and because we want to link it with the new and updated cost version, I will do this. When everything is ready, you can use update up button and wait for magic to happen. The system will inform us that great number of tasks will be updated based on our methodology and updated cost items. When this process is over, all tasks and cost, as cost is updated and you may see that parent tasks with the respective relations is created for building 2. The only thing left is to apply creation template just for this building and generate all tasks for it. I will use the same template but without buildings and apply it. So now you see entire schedule is created including the new building and it contains more than 5000 tasks in total. And we can check cash flow, S curve, activities for updated schedule and also a line of balance for entire schedule. Finally, we can go to schedule animation and check 5D simulation. I remind you again that the entire process is done in just a few minutes and we have our cost and schedule data completely updated and linked with 3D model. I just noted a small issue here with the four very big facade panels in the first level of tower buildings. Since these panels are very high, they should be assigned to the second or third level because now it seems that they are going ahead of time. But that's something that can be easily updated. The rest of uh, the schedule looks quite fine. Even all the levels added to our existing office, office building and also construction of the second building uh, also look fine. To repeat again, all BIM data can be exported into Excel or Power BI reports and since we are limited uh, and approaching to the end of this session, I will show you already prepared Power BI report of the same project with the progress data entered. This is just an example of Power BI template and these are visually presented cost and schedule information. Once we have our progress entries, we can also have earned value analysis, charts, KPI anal analytics and similar. Earned value analysis are also available in gun chart view as a column for earned value. So the last thing I would like to demonstrate for scheduling is how easy it is to make what-if scenarios and explore variation of different schedules for the same project and see the impact of these variation to our cost and um, schedule information. For this, I will load a few prepared methodologies for different construction method of our tower building and one is related to construction methodology of structural elements and the second one is related to different uh, methodology for facade works. For this, I will also use a new zones based on facade orientation 
and selection sets made according to this. You may see facades on different sides of building, east, north, south and west. And these selection sets will be used as references for a new zone, which make relations between facade works on these different sides of building, starting from west and ending with the south side. The methodology for structural works uh, here is slight, slightly changed. Here we want to push concrete core walls ahead of all other structural works, in this case, for example, five levels ahead, while prefabricated columns are two levels ahead of other works. This is just a demonstration to see what is achievable and to visually see these changes applied in our 5D simulation. When compared these methodologies, you can clearly see the difference in structural work, work items and their relations. The methodology for curtain wall itself is to execute mullions and then panels using fast track method. So to show you this version of schedule, I will create a new one called new high rise methodology and link it to the latest schedule. For creating it automatically, we use creation wizard again and I will use the same schedule template as we used before, the uniformat based. Hierarchy levels by buildings and then by work items. The system runs the process and it takes a few seconds again. But once the pro process is completed, we can fit uh, the gun chart in view and I will select all auto-generated tasks for tower building and delete them from the schedule. Using task editor and in order to apply different methodology to this building only, I have to delete previously used creation rules. Hit delete and yes. Now only for the tower building task, I will use high-rise methodology template. Load it from the templates, find it and apply. This process shows you just how easy it is to create different variation of schedules or parts of the schedule for different projects. When the schedule is created, we would like to see the schedule animation, so I'll go to this module, click update and wait for result. Now when we play it, we can see a different construction methodology for tower building according to predefined methodology items. And we can play it a little bit more to see if there's any issues. Note that Core walls are being executed ahead of all other structural works, while facade works are also executed in a fast track, but with the, with the offset of five levels from construction slabs. Since everything seems fine, I'll return to schedule and duplicate it once more to show you a variation for facade works methodology as well. New one will have suffix facade sides. And when the schedule is duplicated, in order to apply new methodology for facade works, we need to delete all previously created facade works. So we need to find curtain walls task and delete them. Next thing to create uh, new task is to use option create new task from linked elements and that creates new parent tasks for curtain walls based on new facade methodology we use. Once the task is created, it's linked to model elements. We need to make a relation of this task with some other, so I will make a predecessor to it. To do that, I will manually link 
these tasks with uh, with the tasks of slab construction on for example 15th floor it means that the curtain walls will start when the slab on 15th floor is executed once we make this relation i can run the creation wizard for facade works and wait for tasks to be created when completed you can see new tasks for facade works generated for work items but based on sides of the building we can now go back to schedule animation hit update again and wait for a few seconds to system refresh and update our new construction simulation video this time facade works for tower building are according to our new methodology the west facade starts when slab on 15 level is completed and then very shortly north facade starts and then east and lastly south facade this was just an example of possibilities of Bexel Manager and advanced scheduling options. Don't mind if uh, something was uh, not accurate since I'm not a planner and this was just a demonstration of various workflows to explore multiple options. So for the end, I would like to give you a glimpse of some things that we, that we are currently developing. Actually, I could announce that uh, in the first quart quarter of next year we will release something that uh, I believe is the first truly beam based project management platform on a global level. So this will be an online platform collecting all the beam data from multiple project versions and multiple revisions of projects saved on common data environment. Entire platform is extremely flexible and interactive and it can visually represent BIM project metadata. In this example I'm showing cost information from a different revisions of the same project. We can use filter for example to show cost from BIM based and cost added from cost items not related to model. Now we can easily check the same information from different projects since all raw data from all BIM projects can be stored and visually updated here. Another interesting example relating to cost is showing project cost per square meter calculated for each revision. Again, you can play and customize visuals. We can even compare the same data from different projects and change graph to represent data in the best possible way. Another nice example is planned versus sexual comparisons. So these graphs show planned and actual cost between revisions of the same project in a different ways as data bars or lines. And since the platform is very user friendly, friendly uh, interactive and flexible, we can change the data structure and present mixed information in one uh, chart for example and all the data from this platform can be exported into excel files the next in interesting example related to cost is earned value comparisons again between different project revisions the charts changed again visually in a few ways and the same thing reviewed for different projects. Projects tab will enable detailed analytics for each project and its revisions, for example number of elements per category, number of clashes per discipline, uh, cost structures or similar. Uh, data insights will enable detailed analytic per data domain for example quantity of concrete works used in all project in one place or in one country access credentials for users can be defined for each project 
or for each data domain they can access. For example, access to 3D data, cost and schedule data, and so on. The platform will have additional links and connections with knowledge bases where you can use various analysis templates such as IDS templates, BSDD, cost databases, and much more. All information will be stored in a database host on cloud or hosted on client premises, and all the data can be accessed using Bexel uh, REST API. This way, the number of customization or integration with the other application is practically unlimited. So Bexel has an agnostic approach to everything, and so various model viewers can be integrated and therefore be totally independent from any commercial platform. This means that you'll be able to review your 3db model geometry using various browsers and data store on your premises without compromising your information. This is just a preview of the sample beam project and this is one of possible viewers. In this example we integrated the model explorer similar to the one that we are using in Bexel Manager. Using it user can very easily select and visually inspect model groups or elements executing during a specific period. This can be very useful for interaction directly from the site. Another great news is that we are releasing an add-in for Navisworks Manager which will allow you to export any 3D model opened in Navisworks directly to Bexel Manager. This is a very useful tool and a great workflow especially for all design platforms which are model-based design platform for infrastructure, power plant design and similar which doesn't allow us to export IFC directly or when exported files are very limited and hard to work with. This will save us uh, time and make possible to review your 3D files in Bexel Manager, no matter what application you used to create these 3D files. To make uh, this process even easier, we enabled users to map 3D geometry, especially proxy element, to any common BIM 3D category. To do that, you'll need to make selection sets or search sets in Navisworks and then map each created set with the predefined BIM categories. By doing that, once you export BX3 file to Bexel Manager, all created categories will be re recognized as well as all properties from model originally opened in Navisworks. And using our custom breakdowns, you may additionally reorganize elements in a different ways and practically do something that wasn't possible so far. So that would be all for today. Hope you enjoyed this session as, as well as we did while making this presentation. Thank you all for your time. For any question, feel free to contact our support. And for all news, follow us on YouTube and LinkedIn.